Okay, so what I want to talk to you about in this video is dust spotting and dust removal. And everybody likes to do dust removal in Lightroom. And yeah, Lightroom does a pretty good job of dust removal. However, here I've got this, in my opinion, rather yum yummy uh, minimalist landscape shot up in Iceland. And if we activate the dust spots, or the dust spot removal or visualization you can see i've got quite a few dust bunnies on this picture yeah go up to iceland for a week in march late february early march keep changing your lenses yep yeah, you'll get dust bunnies on your sensor and this is a shaky sensor a self-cleaning one now then if i come over to this other version of the image you can see that i've already put a lot of dust removal points on this image inside of Lightroom. Now, the only thing is, if you notice, as I move across the image, you'll notice how laggy the cursor becomes. And if I try to remove that dust spot there, yeah, it does a pretty good job. Why it samples from the places it samples from, I've no idea. And I can put another one there. Now, why is it sampled from down here? It's all crazy, but this lagginess that a lot of people come across when they're trying to remove a lot of dust spots inside a Lightroom is due to one simple fact. Despite what anybody might tell you to the contrary, all these dust spot correction adjustments are held in RAM. They are virtual. So it does make your brush laggy, your tool laggy, it makes Lightroom laggy, and you see it's lagging there and I mean there's 32 giga uh, 32 giga RAM in this machine I mean you can't put any more in it it is quite a fast machine actually but you wouldn't think so just by looking at Lightroom dust spotting so there is a much much better way of dust spotting I do not do dust removal inside a Lightroom. If I've got just the odd one or two, I might do for quickness if I'm working on some wildlife stock images. But for landscapes and other things where I've got to be super, super careful uh, and or I've got a lot of dust spots to remove, I do not do them in Lightroom for this simple reason that it's too RAM intensive. And also, you don't see all the dust spots. No, you don't. You see, the maximum visualization of dust is turned up to the max there. If I slip back to this uh, virtual copy, which is basically not been dust spotted at all, if I turn the visualization down, obviously I can't see them all. So you think you're looking at them all now, but you're not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shovel this image over into Photoshop by just going and clicking done because i don't want to do any dust spotting on this and we will say edit in edit in photoshop and i shall see you in a moment okay so here's our image and how do we go about seeing the dust spots inside of photoshop because yes if we turn it up to 100 percent magnification and we scroll across yes we can see one or two dust spots but lightroom has this tool in it that sort of makes the inexperienced user think that they are looking at their dust spots that's that visualization tool and basically all it is is a well it's a lumin cross between a luminance mask and an edge mask and it doesn't show you everything how do we see all the faults in this image inside of photoshop really really simple and this is the reason i do all my dust removal and blemish corrections inside of photoshop because lightroom is just incapable of doing this sort of thing properly so we're going to go over to the adjustments panel and i'm just going to add a curves adjustment layer now we need to customize this curve and we need to turn it into a standing wave so I'm going to leave the full tones exactly where they are. In other words, the blacks are going to be down here on the uh, bottom left. And I'm also going to drag the highlights down to the same place. 
and then I'm going to get my three quarter tones and I'm going to lift them all the way to the top and then I'm going to get my half tones and I'm going to bring them down to the bottom and then I'm going to get my quarter tones and I'm going to lift them all the way up to the top. So now I've got a standing wave rather like a letter M and we can just come to this little contextual menu here and we can click on there and save the curves preset and we can call this dust off eight as I'm going to call it now and you can see I've got lots of different or subtly different curves saved in here as presets so now we can see all our dust spots and other little blemishes on the sensor like that little dash of a straight line there if we scroll all the way over to the uh, top left hand corner of the image and we can now begin to remove dust spots we could actually go and do it on the background layer by unlocking it first and then we can um, basically use the spot healing tool to remove the dust spots but what I'm actually going to do is produce a new fresh empty layer and then we'll go and pick up our spot healing tool and we'll have it in sample all layers that means it's sampling all the layers below it so it's only taking its samples out of the background image but the dust removal corrections will be applied in this layer one here which i suppose we can go and call dust off right now we've got two basic useful settings for our spot healing brush we've got content aware and we've got proximity match i quite often use proximity match and just have a diffusion setting of three if we pull down the little drop down arrow we can have values of between one and seven i usually do it with three and we can basically working inside this new dust off layer we can just now go and scribble across these dust spots and we can remove them and you could go and do this 10,000 times on this image and you wouldn't make your computer get laggy the brush won't lag because it is an actual physical adjustment that we are making and so we'll hold the space bar key down and we'll come across now we've got dust here but it's not very easily visible so if i come back into the curve i can now modify this curve and i can make it lighter and i can pull that one in and make it go a little bit bluer or i can add a little bit more contrast and go across there so we've actually squared off the two topmost portions of these two crests here and hold the space bar key again and now we can see we've got a group of four and i'm working in the curbs mask and it shouldn't be so we'll go back into the dust off layer and we can keep motoring along rather like this and because i'm using a wacom tablet this is all very pressure sensitive so if i just do a little light touch it's a small spot and if i do a big heavy touch it's a big spot so i'm also going to switch over to content aware just to see if it makes any difference and sometimes you will find that content aware does a good job to remove a spot other times you'll find that proximity match gives you a a, a faster result so here we go and you'll see all sorts of blemishes on images from time to time so you'll get these little what look like scratches now bear in mind they're not um but it's just this extreme curves layer just brings out the little sort of very minuscule and hardly visible faults and errors and um what's the um what's the uh, artifacts that's it artifacts that's the word i was looking for you'll see all sorts of little artifacts on your sensor and the thing is you might think well andy this is all overkill 
Lightroom works for me. And yeah, if you want to carry on using Lightroom, do so. But people always want to know why I do what I do. And I'm telling you and showing you why I do my dust spotting in Photoshop like this. The only thing is, if you get small artifacts and then you go and print it, print that image rather big, those small artifacts now become much bigger artifacts. And the thing is, if you have a three or a four foot print hanging on your wall and suddenly one day, probably four or five weeks after you've hung it on your wall, you'll suddenly decide that, oh, there's a dust spot there. And then every time you look at the print thereafter, your eyes will go straight to it. And the other thing is, if you are um, doing images for stock, stock sales, then you may well find that you'll sell an image on stock and then you'll have to refund the image um, because it's covered in dust and the buyer can't be bothered to go and get rid of the dust themselves. Um, so there you go. So what I'll do is I will speed the video up now because I don't think you want to watch me doing this. And uh, so I'll see you in a bit when I've done it all. So what I'm going to do now is come back up to the Curves panel and I'm going to select another curve preset that I've got, which is this Dust Off Highlight. And now you can see the overall colour and contrast and tonality of the image has changed. So we'll just click back into the Dust Off layer and we'll just hold the Shift key down and we'll go back across the image. Because we've now changed the colour and contrast of this wacky psychedelic image that we are looking at we can now potentially see one or two other marks and blemishes that we couldn't see before see because well, last time we came through here this was very bright lurid magenta now because we've got a, an inverted version of the same curve what was magenta is now shifted to green and we can see that there is a little spot there or a blemish there that we couldn't see before so you know you have thousands of pounds worth of camera hundreds or thousands of pounds worth of lens you might spend hundreds or thousands of pounds going to a location to take your images and you've got hundreds or thousands of pounds worth of computer that you're sitting there processing your images on. So doesn't it make sense that if you're very proud of an image and you can see its commercial viability, if that's what floats your boat, or if you just want to print it very, very big and hang it on your wall to uh, impress everybody who comes round to uh, your house, then don't you think it's worth taking the extra time and doing your dust spot correction in Photoshop because you can remove all the blemishes on your image inside of Photoshop. See, you couldn't see that one before. Um, but you can remove all the blemishes in Photoshop. And you, even though this colour is very skewed and psychedelic, it sort of lets you see where even bits that aren't dust spots or blemishes such as this little bit of cloud in here it jars a little bit with the rest of the image that surrounds it so you know you might want to actually take that little bit of cloud out i personally can't be bothered at the minute but i hope by now you understand and see the validity and the extra benefit 
of actually doing your dust spot removal and blemish removal inside of Photoshop as opposed to inside of Lightroom. So all we need to do is turn off that curves layer and there's our image and all the dust spot corrections and blemish corrections are there on that layer. So uh, hope you found that useful. Hope you found it interesting. If you have, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, give us a comment. Um, yeah, I do realise there's going to be people who will give this a thumbs down because they don't like it, because they are Lightroom slags, and they believe Lightroom is the best thing since sliced bread. Here's my take on it. No, it isn't. Photoshop always has been, is, and always will be the best thing since sliced bread for processing your images. Anyway, there you go. That's upset some people. But anyway, hope you've enjoyed it, guys. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Toodaloo.